Multimeters are very useful but they only give us one reading at a time. If we want to see how a signal changes over time we need a more advanced instrument, the oscilloscope. An oscilloscope measures an electrical signal using probes and graphs it on its display. Connecting an oscilloscope to a circuit is similar to measuring a voltage with a multimeter. In fact it's a bit simpler because the positive and the negative leads are housed in the same cable. Most probes come with a removable hook tip for keeping a secure connection. The ground clip, as you may have already guessed, connects to a ground point in the circuit. The probe tip is connected to whichever point we'd like to test. Remember that oscilloscope probes must be appropriately calibrated before we carry out any measurements. Now if we generate a sinusoidal signal with our waveform generator and connect its output to the channel A probe, we can see a trace on the display representing the signal. The waveform however is moving around quite a bit. To stabilize it, we need to select an appropriate trigger point. We can start with the auto function to select one, and this works most of the time but not every time. The trigger level is a voltage level that you set, and it determines when the oscilloscope begins drawing the waveform. You can adjust the trigger level by moving the yellow diamond vertically to the desired amplitude point. The waveform remains stable as long as the trigger level is within its range. However, if you set the trigger outside this range, the oscilloscope will be unable to find the voltage at which to start drawing. For instance, if the trigger level is set to 3 volts, since the maximum amplitude of the waveform is 2 volts, the oscilloscope cannot find that level because the waveform never reaches it. This causes the waveform to drift back and forth, resulting in instability. Similarly, if the trigger level is set too low, minus 3 volts here, the oscilloscope will again fail to find a stable reference point from which to start drawing. To achieve stability, set the trigger level at a voltage which is well within the signal range, and not too close to the extreme ends of the range. This way, the oscilloscope can reliably detect when the level is reached, and anchor the waveform to a stable reference point. In this signal representation, the x-axis represents time and the y-axis represents voltage. We can change both our horizontal and vertical scales to display our signal in a way that facilitates our measurements. For instance, we can adjust the seconds per division on the time scale, which changes the number of seconds represented by each of the 10 segments into which the x-axis is divided. With the time per division set to 500 microseconds, we can see that the period of the signal is 1 millisecond, which corresponds to a frequency of 1 kHz. We can also adjust the vertical range over which our signal is displayed. This differs slightly from a standard oscilloscope, where the amplitude range is typically changed by setting the volts per division parameter of the channel. However, we can easily draw a direct parallel between the two. For a plus minus 5 volts range we have 1 volt per division. For a plus minus 10 volts range, we have 2 volts per division. And so on. We can carry out both amplitude and time measurements using rulers, which are referred to as cursors in standard oscilloscopes. I can simply click and drag this box to my first amplitude measurement point, then do the same for the second measurement point. The software will automatically display the amplitude values for each point as well as their delta. To remove the rulers, I can just click on the X on the pop-up window. Similarly, for time measurements, I can drag this box to my first measurement point, and then to the second. The software will automatically display the time values and their delta. Alternatively, we can use built-in measurements such as peak-to-peak -peak amplitude, period, and frequency. Note that if you select the medium-sized measurement, you will get additional statistics that can help you obtain a more accurate value, especially in the presence of noise.